Good morning, Twitch.tv. Good morning to YouTube hear as ye, well. Hear ye. Let the record show that this viewer was here first. And of course, good morning, Mini Motorways. Let's go to Zurich for today's daily challenge, which will have four and exactly four traffic lights and a lot of busy businesses. Samurai Sam was here first. Good morning, Sam. Hi, Nora. Yes, you're a very cute kitty cat. There's a girl. Uh, happy Tears of the Kingdom release day to those who celebrate. I read a very nice review on Polygon. It is apparently Breath of the Wild, but more of that, which, hey, listen, everybody wanted it to be Breath of the Wild, but more of that, and Nintendo was like, okay, bet. So they made Breath of the Wild, but more of that, and people are going to like it. it. It has an average review score of roughly 100 out of 10 from what I've seen. I, there's this post going around that has like 18 game sites on it and it's like, you know, here's 14 10 out of 10s, 2 5 out of 5s, 1 9 out of 10, and 1 4 out of 5. So, yay. <laughs> oh, God. Listen, if, if Breath of the Wild was beautiful, Tears of the Kingdom looks like it was built in the same engine. Like, the screenshots I saw, it doesn't even look like there, there's a single... There's a review outlet that gave it a 6 out of 10. Ooh. These are either my kind of people or terrible trolls. But, listen. I haven't played Tears of the Kingdom. I probably shouldn't shit on Tears of the Kingdom. I'm also a person who exists on the internet, and therefore, for my own safety, I maybe shouldn't shit on Breath of the Wild. But, hey... We did an entire Let's Play of Breath of the Wild here on the channel. Y'all can go find out why I don't like Breath of the Wild. Or we'll just talk about it. I don't know. Is it mean for me to you know, shit all over people's thing on the day the thing comes out? On the one hand, let people like things. On the other hand, I feel bad for being a person who has an unpopular opinion, but also is a harmless unpopular opinion. Like, as unpopular opinions... You as unpopular opinions go, I did not care for The Legend of Zelda colon Breath of the Wild is one of the least harmful and most unpopular unpopular opinions. So, you know, whatever. Tears of the Kingdom, by the reviews I saw, by the, the videos I've seen, the screenshots and all of that, it literally does look like they took Breath of the Wild and were like, hey, what if we add this, 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 and this? And also, we seriously, we even more than Breath of the Wild did emphasize our terrible crafting mechanic. And maybe they made it not terrible. You know, maybe. <sighs> anyway, happy Tears of the Kingdom release day to those who celebrate. Also, I want to note it for the record. I read like three different reviews and they're all talking about how one of the big things in Tears of the Kingdom is verticality and moving from like there's a sky area and an underground area and an overworld area. So there's these three levels, these three distinct play spaces in the game, right? Not a single one of them has had the pun more like Tears of the Kingdom Am I right? So, you know, it's me. Hi, I'm the funny guy. Or everyone thought it and decided it was silly and didn't make the joke. But that's nonsense. If you think of the silly obvious joke, someone is obligated to make the silly obvious joke. And by God, if no one else will, I will. Ow. But enough about The Legend of Zelda, colon, Tears of the Kingdom. Let's talk about another video game that we have played, that being Mass Effect Andromeda, which we played last night on stream. It is uh, fine and enjoyable, mostly from a let's make fun of this game. And again, the combat, the mechanical gameplay of Mass Effect Andromeda, pretty good. Kind of repetitive, but that's also on my play style. It, they haven't really come like the combat is repetitive in a way I will not 
there was a point, I believe there was a point where I argued somewhat believably that Mass Effect Andromeda was a better video game than The Legend of Zelda colon Breath of the Wild. I'm going to recant that particular stance. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is a better yeah yeah the legend of zelda colon breath of the wild is a better video game than mass effect andromeda i don't like it as much but it's a better video game you know the difference there you can appreciate the difference here it's like saying that you know citizen kane is a better movie than the brave little toaster citizen kane is probably a better movie than the brave little toaster I saw Citizen Kane once in a film appreciation class and literally fell asleep, actually. Um, and I fucking love The Brave Little Toaster. Citizen Kane is a better movie than The Brave Little Toaster, but I like The Brave Little Toaster more. Similarly, although I don't like The Brave Little... I don't like Mass Effect Andromeda as much as I like The Brave Little Toaster, but anyway... The Legend of Zelda, colon, why did I not take that tunnel? Oh my god, bad decision, Goog. Oh, that's, that's a bad and dumb thing I just did. Oh well. Let's take this, uh, we'll take this bridge back here and get these three reds to support this business. Yes, hi, Nora. Yes, you're very meowy this morning, as you are most mornings because you're a cat. Very meowy cat at that. How about that? All right, so these four, five yellows are gonna, mm, actually, yeah, we can, we can incorporate this. This is fine. Here, you need to do this. This is what we'll do. We're gonna have to kill this tunnel for just a second. Draw this back right here. So we played Mass Effect Andromeda on stream last night. Had a good time. Thank you to everyone who came out for that. We actually advanced the main plot for once which is a thing you can do in, if you're playing Mass Effect Andromeda. You try hard enough for long enough, you can eventually advance the main plot. And this is a fine, silly little main plot. I was wrong about one of the main plot twists in Mass Effect Andromeda. Uh, we're gonna discuss a spoiler for this five, six, I think six year old video game at this point. When did Mass Effect Andromeda release? I wanna say 2017. Mass Effect Andromeda release date was March 21st, 2017. Okay, we're gonna, dis we're gonna discuss spoilers for this not very good six-year-old video game. Be warned. So for the entirety of Mass Effect Andromeda, I have been under the assumption that the main twist would be Sam never understood the whole spoilers are fine if the game is old argument. I mean, if the game is if the game is old enough, it's like if you cared enough about it, you would have played it by now, which I sort of understand. Like I I sort of get that. I understand where the, where that mindset comes from. Uh let's rejigger by the way. Uh these blues and there is so much stuff to care about. Like you shouldn't just straight up drop for the most part, right? Like, okay, here's an example. There's a very famous, hmm, I don't know. I was gonna give the very famous spoiler in Final Fantasy VII as an example of a spoiler that it's okay to just casually drop. Huh, I don't know. There's a very famous spoiler in Star Wars. I was just gonna say that, Sam. I was just gonna say that. There's a very famous spoiler in Star Wars, right? If you know, it is very hard to exist as a person in society. There you go, that's the standard. If it is very hard to exist as a person in society without knowing the spoiler and it has been a long time since the spoiler became spoiled, I think it's okay to just casually drop it. I don't think, you know, I did give a proper warning for we're going to discuss spoilers for this not very good six-year-old video game, Mass Effect Andromeda. And like, 
if we're discussing and listen, we're here, I'm going to use as an example, a very famous spoiler from Final Fantasy VII. If you don't want to be spoiled for Final Fantasy VII, mute the video for the next five minutes. Sephiroth kills Eris, right? That's a thing that happens in Final Fantasy VII. It's like the thing that happens in Final Fantasy VII, in addition to, you know, the plot of Final Fantasy VII or whatever. And that knowledge, again, when I've played FF7 Remake or I've talked about FF7 Remake with people, I am of the opinion that everybody knows the plot of Final Fantasy VII to the point where everybody knows the plot of Final Fantasy VII is a major plot point in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. And that's cool, right? But also, I know because, you know, statistics exist and also I've, I've interacted with these people, there are people who don't know that Sephiroth kills Eris, even if they're like, you know, 30 year old video game fans or whatever. So there are people who, there are probably, amazingly, there are probably people who are like 35 years old and watching Andor who don't know that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father or whatever. So, I don't know. If you're gonna spoil a thing, mention that you're gonna spoil the thing, I guess is the point we're trying to make here. Even if the thing is a uh, legendary 26, yeah, 1997, a legendary 26 year old video game, or in this case, a mediocre six year old video game. We're going to spoil a mediocre six-year-old video game for the remainder of this video. Also, I'm taking a tunnel. So for the entire game, I've been under the assumption that the big twist is going to be that my dad put my mom in my robot, by which I mean Alec Ryder somehow found a way to transfer the dying bits of Ellen Ryder's consciousness into uh, the Sam implant. Turns out, Okay, you can fucking spoil Romeo and Juliet for anyone who has taken high school English. Romeo and Juliet is, you know, you can you can discuss without warning the plot twist, by which I mean the twit the plot of Romeo and Juliet. Alright, you uh three blue guys are gonna join up here. We're gonna get more support going out there to that guy. You three right here are going to support this business. Everybody go. Uh, this circle is not going to be happy with just five blue guys, I bet. Fortunately, we do have more blue guys. So, you know, we could make for happier blue guys, maybe. I don't know. Did I have a point? Uh, I may or may not have had a point at one instance. You need to go that away. We're going to chop these three yellows together. Unfortunately, I don't really have a great collection of yellows going. I've got you, but yeah, this isn't, uh, hmm. Could do a motorway for these three. I could do a bridge and some road for these. Oh, uh, no, I'd have to fuck them up with the blue guys, and uh, that's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Yeah, I think we're just going to make this simple and draw motorway number two right here it's definitely going to leave this business in good shape it's also probably gonna piss off this guy so you know details meanwhile we've got a whole bunch more yellows and so okay you know what hold on hold everything we can make this better i bet let's run you up here which creates an avenue for you to go this way that thereby allowing you three to uh, preponderate yourselves this way. Ha ha! Look at that little dinky motorway too. Stupendous. Let's kill this connection so that instead we can have this one back. And now we've got six. You preponderate. It's totally a word, sort of. Don't, don't examine my grammar usage, Sam. You're not going to like what you see. Okay. Next, uh, let's take another tunnel because I have two bridges. I'll probably need at least one bridge and at least one tunnel for the rest of the run. So it'll be fine. Anyway, so my assumption for the entire game 
has been that somehow Alec Ryder put Ellen Ryder's consciousness into the Sam implant using uh, space 24th, 23rd, third, second, using space science magic. Well, it turns out that no, he did not put my mom on the robot. My dad put my mom on the boat, <laughs> by which I mean she's in a box, frozen. Just kind of waiting on the hope that one day, maybe, they'll come up with a cure for vaguely defined space sickness. Which is what she has. That's her clinical diagnosis. She has vaguely defined space sickness. Unfortunately, we have yet to discover a cure for vaguely defined space sickness. So, she's just in a box. <laughs> and as I was playing last night, I realized, oh no... This is DLC bait. <laughs> They've introduced this into the main plot, but they're not actually gonna, you know, do anything with it. They're using it to set up a DLC or even a sequel that's never gonna happen. <laughs> so that's great. We've got the absolute knowledge that this plot point will not be picked up, which is always a good thing to have. All right, we have a problem. And by a problem, I mean an annoyance. And the annoyance is this yellow business. This yellow business is a real pain in my tuchus. All right, let's do something silly. We're going to do something silly with these red guys. They're going to come all the way down here and hook into that business like so. That is going to allow this path to be utilized by uh, these yellow fellas right here. We're going to take all of these yellows like so they're going to come out here and then they're going to uh actually what if we did this awful thing we do that awful thing we run this up to here and now these reds going down here and these yellows coming up here just get to kind of meet and we'll see what happens Samurai Sam wants to remember a guy, and that guy is Clay Buckholes, one of the wettest men to ever exist. <laughs> Wait, it, it occurs to me that this intersection right here allows for these reds to go this way, which is not a thing that I want. It also allows for these reds to go this way, which is ultra super not a thing that I want. So, fuck, basically. I don't think I have a remedy for that right now. I think we're just going to have to live with that reality and deal with the fact that that's inevitably going to be what dooms us all. Swell. That's just neat. All right. Well, hopefully in the fullness of time, we'll uh, get another motorway. Hey, look, another motorway. Great. So the presence of this other motorway allows me to reconsider most things. Uh, Trombone Dalek points out that my caption said that guy is Clay Butthole, who is one of the wettest. And, um, yes, we're discussing. No, I'm not going to say we're discussing dripping anuses this morning. I'm going to say something different. We're discussing Clay. <laughs> <coughs> we're discussing Clay Buckholes, who is a former Major League Baseball pitcher. He threw a no hitter one time. That's a true fact. Clay Buckholes threw a no hitter. He used to be good, and then he was bad. He was bad more than he was good, but when he was good, he was good. Anyway. Oh, boy. All right. Um, the hell are we doing with our reds and yellows and everything together? All right. You green guys, I didn't mean to kill your road. You're fine. You're, you're, you four are killing it, keeping this business happy, healthy, and strong. I love it. Meanwhile, you four are okay. You're fine. I don't have major complaints for you. I do have some major complaints for you. Why can't... Okay. That was weird. Can I draw motorway number three straight down to here? Yes and no. I can draw motorway three up and over to here, which appears to be fine. That sends yellow guys over here, right? So we do this. We get yellow guys going down here. Now, unfortunately, we still need, say, red guys over here. Fortunately, luckily even, 
uh, we have the means by which to accomplish that, by which I mean we can just take these seven red guys, right, and we'll irk them down here. Now, once we irk them down here, that's going to leave this business completely and totally fucked. Well, good news, buddy. We also have these red guys here. These red guys here are presently doing fucking nothing. So what if we had them do, I don't know, fucking something? And that fucking something can be this. So now these three red guys are responsible for this business. These seven red guys will in a moment be responsible for this business, which totally won't die in the interregnum. Uh, these four red guys will be responsible for this business as they have been. Can I get this bridge back, please? We're kind of, you know, dying here. Thank you. All right, so now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven houses coming down this way. Everything's coming up Goog House. We're cool. Save this circle, please. So Clay Buckholes is one of many former Boston Red Sox prospects who made me go, yay, prospects, they're the best thing ever, and then turned out to only be okay. And for a while I was like, ugh, prospects. I fucking hate prospects. And listen, it, it might be a bit extreme to say that I fucking hate prospects, but at a certain level, I kind of fucking hate prospects still always and forever like the promise that this man will one day be a great major league baseball player does not work on 2023 goog the same way it worked on like 2005 goog also clay buckholes could never stay healthy he was in fact made out of tissue paper wet soppy long-haired laptop stealing tissue paper let's take a roundabout even though i'm going to use a tunnel right now I'm going to use a tunnel right now because we have roughly a quadrillion yellow guys who can be of some assistance coming down this way. Hey, look, you're going to come down this way. You, you, and you. You know what? We're going to. No, no. I don't remember the details because it's been a very long time, but the TLDR is when Clay Buckholes was in college, he got in trouble for stealing laptops. Because that's a thing you do, I guess. But hey, any excuse to make fun of the person we don't like, we will absolutely take. We know that by now. All right. Uh, you two yellow guys, could you two by yourselves support this business? Probably not. I'm going to go with not. Sam asks if I don't love La Ryan LaVarnway and Lars Anderson. God. I think by the time Ryan LaVarnway busted, I had mostly realized that prospects were essentially lottery tickets. And... Lars Anderson, though. Lars Anderson was one of the ones where it was like the Red Sox hype machine kicked into full gear. It was like, oh, this guy's tearing up double A. He's going to be fantastic. And then he came up and he was bad. Like he wasn't even fine. He was just bad. And it turns out he was bad. So, you know. You remember that whole Lars Anderson's going to be great thing? Yeah, it turns out we were lying to goose his trade value and then we couldn't trade him or whatever. Uh, we're going to move motorway number one down here because, you know, this little collection of five blue guys is not as impressive as this medium sized collection of seven blue guys, particularly not when you realize that we could make it a medium sized collection of I uh, know that would be difficult. Lars Anderson ever played 30 games in the major leagues. I believe that. He was not good. And listen, there are some guys who are highly touted prospects who come up and struggle, but you can tell that they're actually good and they're just taking time. Like, say, Francisco Alvarez. Francisco Alvarez is a highly touted prospect who struggled mightily when he came up, but people can tell that he's good and he's going to adjust and he's probably going to be good. He might even still be great, but he's probably going to be good. And then there are guys who you can tell, oh, that guy's not good. Oh, that guy's not good. You know, your Lars Andersons of the world, your Bobby Dahlbecks of the world. <sighs> you 
your Ryan's Lavarnaway of the world. But hey, Clay Buckholz was good for a while. He was also not good for a while. There was a period of time where he was not good, but was getting good results. And it was f- it was confusing and fun, but also annoying. I think he... I don't remember if he did win the Cy Young that year, or if he just almost won the Cy Young that year. But there was one year where Clay Buckholz either did or almost did win the Cy Young, despite not actually being good. So, that was fun. It was weird, but, you know. Weird bad weird things happen in baseball. It's part of the joy and charm of it. All right, this red circle is very angry. This red circle over here also very angry. Both of these things make sense. I understand actually I understand this guy being angry more than I understand this guy being angry. Why are why have you decided that that this neighborhood needed a second set of green guys? I disagree with that assessment personally. I know it's not my choice to make. This wasn't exactly my call here. I don't think I would have gone in that direction. However, the good news is it does allow us to draw the longest, stupidest road in the history of Good Morning Mini Motorways. I'm so fucking excited for the longest, stupidest road in the history of Good Morning Mini Motorways. Y'all, check this out. We're going to draw the longest and stupidest road in the history of Good Morning Mini Motorways. (laughs) Gape in awe at the length and stupidity of this road. (laughs) Look at this road. (laughs) Look at this. (laughs) And yet I think this is fine, actually. I think this might actually be okay. (laughs) It's not, but it could be. It might be. You cannot be certain that it is not. Look, the business is fine. We got cars in driveways down here. Kinda. Oh God. All right, let's take another tunnel because I'm out of tunnel. Look. We've got cars parking in driveways. We're supporting this business, sort of. With, good lord, the length and stupidity of this road. It is an exceedingly long and magnificently stupid road. But hey, it's not dying yet. The yellow guys are dying. Why are the yellow guys dying? Yellow guys, don't be dying. Nobody approved you dying. Uh, Sam notes, I could adjust these reds to get a fourth greenhouse. I could. I could get a fourth greenhouse going right here, which it wouldn't be a bad thing. It could split the four houses to have two slightly less. Yeah, I could supplement this guy. I don't think, I think two this close would keep this business happy, but under the conditions of like rush hour, I don't think these two can keep this guy happy. So... On the other hand, he's not like, okay, fine. Here, let's do this. We're going to we're gonna take Samurai Sam up on his suggestion. We're going to shave a little bit of trouble off of this destination here. Also, uh, you can just do that. Thanks. You're actually like the first guy going this way. Congratulations. So with that having been said and done, we can do uh, this thing right here. So now these two are primary support for this and everything else on the map is secondary support, I guess. All right. Now, uh, let's figure out while we're here out figuring things, you know what we can do? We can draw this little yellow road right here, which can hook around and down and I can take motorway number two and do something else with it. So remind me to fix this yellow business after I save motorway number two. Uh, These two guys right here, you know what you three are gonna do? You three are gonna shoot yourselves this way. Yes, you three are gonna shoot yourselves that away. Go out here and service uh, this business. This business then, can these three support this all by themselves? Mm, probably not. 
but they can definitely let me chop, say, these three off of here. And having chopped these three off of here, we can bring them over this way into a roundabout. Haha, <laughs> look at the roundabout. And we'll do a southern spur of the roundabout going into here to this business. Let's take this dark blue guy, run it into the roundabout to support this guy as, you know, penance and making up for the fact that we've totally overfucked this guy now. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Everybody go. You point south. And everybody go. Thank you for being here, trombone trombone Dalek. I was going to say tromboned Alec, but no, I was mispronouncing the word Dalek for ages. All right. Uh, you're a red guy who doesn't mean anything. Good for you. Motorway number two, can you come into a better existence yet? Thank you. Uh, so this red circle just got angry. Hey, you remember when I said you don't mean anything? I was wrong about stuff. Let's send you down this way to support that, and we'll make up for it by stealing you from you and you going that away. That's all going to be totally fine. All right. Uh, this yellow circle got mad, but we just started fixing it. So hopefully it's going to be okay. Uh, you know what? Let's put a little bit more support going up that away. We're going to totally overclock this roundabout, but it's, it's fine. Maybe, hopefully. Uh, red guys are mad. That I understand. Let's take a motorway and assess our situation. Now, how best... To save these fuckers, I wonder. How best to save these fuckers is a famous 19th century novel, I assume. Maybe not. Let's see here. We've got issues. Yeah, let's say we've got issues. Also, hey, why don't you just come up here because this business is looking a little angry. Speaking of businesses that look a little angry, uh, this business looks a little angry. All right, you know what we can do? Hold on. This is what we can do. You can go right there. Uh, you need to point this way, unfortunately. This can be a traffic light. Having done all that, uh, I think we can actually boop you over to here because this business was looking a little e even with these two houses being directly adjacent this business was a little mad about stuff so stop being so mad about stuff now then what are we doing all oh, right we have a motorway and some red guys well i mean it seems like a natural combination to put the motorway with some red guys but do we really want to do that i don't think we want to do that i think we want to do some other thing I don't know what that other thing is precisely, but, you know, we'll figure shit out. Probably. I've got these blue guys going up here. These blue guys go here. This business is pretty much surrounded by guys. That's okay. Uh, I've got this weird clusterfuck situation going on, but that's pretty much fine. Um, motorway number two services. You swing down there. That's okay. Uh, this blue guy is pretty angry, which seems like a problem. However, I can't really think of a best way. Like, my biggest clump of unused blue guys is these guys right here, but I can't just motorway them on account of thumbs up mountain here. That's what this looks like. It doesn't look like anything else. It's just thumbs up mountain. You understand? So Thumbs Up Mountain here uh, is blocking the access of these five blue guys to this business. So you know what? Uh, fuck those blue guys, actually. How about that? What if we just say fuck those blue guys? What if instead of those blue guys, we use these blue guys and also these blue guys? And we do this and this and this and this. And then motorway number four swings out this way. Huzzah! Everybody go. Now, how exactly does drawing motorway number four save our red guys? Well, I'll tell you, Timmy, it doesn't. It doesn't. The red guys are just fucked. Did you want a better answer than that? I don't have a better answer than that. I have uh, this silly little road, which I can draw right here to connect this red guy to, you know, everything. Also, I suppose, following that same logic, I can do this. 
swing this singular red house out this way. And now I've added two whole red houses to save this guy. And that'll, by association, save everybody else? Maybe? Hopefully? Probably not, but you know, we can hope. We live in hope. These guys come down here. You go down there. This business is actually less angry now. Uh, this business is still angry. Yeah, the problem is we've got cars coming at it from both directions, which is, you know, bad. But on the other hand, uh, we are up over like 3,600 trips, which is decent. Also, uh, this roundabout, which is probably killing everything, is uh, quickly killing everything. So that's good. Observe how quickly is the how quickly the killing or something. I don't know. Uh, this blue circle is mad, even though it's got guys, which frankly I think is bullshit. You shouldn't be mad if you've got guys. That's a rule. Here, you point down that away. Save this. Oh, crap. I think we might just be falling apart here, which is annoying. We'll take a bridge. Um, is there any red guy here? No. All right. Well, you can point diagonally that way, I guess. That'll be moderately quicker, a little bit more helpful. This, These two businesses are fine, but I can't really do anything to... Okay, no. I think this is just... We've done all we can do at this point, or at least all that I feel like doing. We're going to play this out and hope it sustains itself or something. Is there anything more deeply productive that I can... Well, I mean, I can run these two blue guys up here, over to here, get two more dark blues coming in to save this business. That's one of 19 things that I can possibly do. Uh, we can point you down south, but this guy's already dead. So, hey... I mean, 4,365 commuters, that sounds like a good score. Lasted 102 days. I'm feeling pretty confident. Top 1%. Holy hell. Oh. <laughs> All right, then. I mean, I did say I was feeling pretty confident. We'll take number six in the world. We'll take doubling up Sam the Samurai, tripling up Bog Unicorn, I think. I think I came just shy of tripling up Bog Unicorn, but uh, we quadrupled up Parlor Coast. We'll take that. We take those. Congrats to Soya and Zrat and La Shimjin, McQuilan and John Chow. You were all better than me, but everyone else in the world who has done today's daily challenge in mini motorways, all uh, several thousand of you one hopes. Yeah, we, we know just from this that it's, well, several hundred at least, all hopefully several thousand of you have been beaten by the underscore goo. Drop those GGs in the chat if you've got them. Huzzah! Victory for the underscore goo. It always feels good. All right, I forgot to set up the Wordle screen. Shame on me. Let's set up the Wordle screen. Do da, do da. Let's set up the Wordle screen. We'll catch the. I don't know. What's the. De if Wordle is an NFL offense, what's the defense? Um, we'll catch the daily crossword defense blitzing the quarterback and throw the Wordle screen, get some offensive linemen in front of Wordle, and send Wordle into the. It's a football joke. I make football jokes. Yeah! Once again, it's on. I don't even remember which Madden had that song, but you know which one it was. You now have that song stuck in your head. Yeah. Macho man. Yeah. It's not macho. There is, however, a C and an A in the words. So listen, we have our tacit approval. I think it's been tacit. Also, it can't be tacit because the A and the C are in the exact same place. They're still driving the Bronco. AC, Al, Al Cowlings was, okay, fine. Whatever. It could be many, many things. Uh, it could be place. It could absolutely be place. We have not put Wordle in its place, but we have, however, put the A and the C in their place, which is nice. Uh, it could be, well, it's not smack, but it could be snack. 
could absolutely be. Holy crap, is it snack? It's snack! Ha <laughs> ha! Victory once more! Quickly solving the wordle in just a mere scant three guesses. Oh, I feel good. Today has been a good day, damn it. We have triumphed, basically. I'm just gonna say triumphed in the daily challenge, even though there were five people who did it better, but we're gonna ignore that fact. And we solved Wordle in three, and that is lovely. Folks, I will be back, and it's Friday. And it's Friday, and it's Mother's Day weekend. So call your mom, or go see your mom, or you know, go to a movie theater in Eastern Massachusetts and watch the new Guardians movie, and then go to a mid-tier chain restaurant. Like I do with my mom every Mother's Day. Anyway, my point is I'll be back Monday morning and then not much next week, actually, because I've got a lot of trips coming up for work. But hey, that means a lot of money coming in from work. So not everything is bad. Where was I going with this? I think I was going to the end screen with this. Yes, let's go to the end screen with this. Goodbye. Goodbye.